This is going to be a very interesting documentary. It's titled, What Do Voters See in Donald Trump? And this is a very vital question, especially today. A few days ago, we saw this Hispanic woman screaming for Trump. A um, few months ago, we saw a bunch of black people running on the streets saying, blacks for Trump. We've seen Latinos for Trump. The question is, what do voters see in Trump? Why do they want him back in office? Well, let's see if this documentary can help us understand. Donald Trump? Again? What fascinates his supporters and who are they? Jasmine Jordan is young, religious and studies political science in Iowa. I definitely always felt lonely as a child, and so it was good to just be around a community of people who had the same beliefs as me. Jack Gilchrist is the president of a metal fabrication company in New Hampshire. He says Donald Trump is better for business. I just voted for President Trump. Feel good about it? I feel damn good about it. Jesus Marquez grew up in Mexico, lives in Las Vegas, and, like many Latinos, wants to see a strong man in the White House. Three perspectives, three states, one go. Donald Trump's re-election. We start our journey into the world of Trump supporters at the beginning of the election year in Iowa, a state in the middle of the country. Record low temperatures characterize the first caucus of the Republican presidential primary season. In the past two elections, Donald Trump had trouble gaining the support of young, college-educated Americans. That has changed. Hi, everybody in Alpha Trump. We meet Jasmine Jordan at the University of Iowa in Iowa City. So my dad is a truck driver. My mom decided to homeschool me because she just felt like I would get a better education, you know, more focused education too. I definitely always felt lonely as a child. Like many young Trump supporters, Jasmine grew up in a very religious family. The 20-year-old from Illinois belongs to the generation who... Do you think that's a good thing? He said like many Trump supporters, Jasmine grew up in a very religious family. Do you think it's a good thing that Trump supporters are religious? People call religious people extreme sometimes. Do you think they would be right to refer to religious people as extreme? I always felt lonely as a child. Like many young Trump supporters, Jasmine grew up in a very religious family. The 20-year-old from Illinois belongs to the generation whose start into college life was heavily influenced by the COVID-19 pandemic. One thing I did like about coming to this school was that there wasn't super strict um, COVID regulations. And then, because like I met all these people online who were going to University of Iowa because there's like all these just different chat forms. And so what kind of did make it challenging was like, I kind of didn't know, you know, do, since I'm not wearing a mask, do I approach people who have masks? And like, it was really hard to like make friends here. And then when I went to make plans with them on campus, like no one wanted to meet up. It just depends like- The feeling I of loneliness from her childhood also dominated the beginning of her college life. In November of my freshman year, I saw, I got an email that said Mike Pence was coming to campus. I was like, oh my gosh, that's the coolest thing ever. And so YAF ended up being the organization that was hosting him. I think he's one of the most pro-life politicians, which I really like. And so it was good to just be around a community of people who had the same beliefs as me, because I didn't really have that back home. Oh, here's something um, that was really cool that I got in the mail. I got a Christmas card from Trump and his family. So that was super exciting. <laughs> So I really? never wanted to get into politics whatsoever. I always felt like it was boring or divisive. But then once I became really involved in YAF, I realized how important it was to like stand up for what you believe in. Jasmine is one of the young conservative women who have embraced Trump's politics. And her support for Donald Trump is becoming increasingly visible. During the Iowa yeah, caucus... It's very visible. She's wearing Trump everywhere. Hats, tags everywhere. She even steps in front of the microphone to advocate for the former president. This also makes her many enemies. And I started, you know, saying just a whole bunch of hateful things about conservatives. And they screenshotted my profile from Instagram and, you know, sent to all 800 of those students. And then they all started calling me a bigot, a white supremacist, a Nazi, <laughs> white and continuing to say just a whole bunch of hateful things that were very untrue and also just didn't make sense because if I'm black, why am I a white supremacist? Maybe you're transracial. In the evening, it's time. Members of the Republican Party have come together for the caucus. 
I am calling this meeting to order. Welcome to the Iowa City 5 Precinct and Iowa City 21 Precinct Caucus. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. The meeting is now officially open. Jasmine is giving her plea for Trump. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jasmine Jordan, and I'm a resident of Iowa City, Iowa. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the greatest president of our lifetime, the only candidate who can beat Joe Biden, President Donald J. Trump. He gave us nearly 300 judges and three great Supreme Court justices and did more for life than any other president in history. He defended Christians from persecution. It's time to finish what we started and make America great again. Thank you. It's 6 a.m. in New Hampshire, one week later. Today, the Republican presidential candidate will be voted for here in the northeast of the U.S. Jack Gilchrist is an early bird. He tries to eat vegetarian. He and his partner exercise a lot and are fans of humidifiers. They don't fit the typical stereotypes of Trump voters. The very vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Generally speaking, Republicans are more... Uh, business-oriented, um, less emotion, more pragmatism. But that's not the only reason why the 69-year-old wants Donald Trump back in the White House. I was always pro-choice until I saw uh, Jackson's, my namesake, firstborn grandson of two, um, five-month ultrasound, and that boy had a personality on his face. And I changed my stance to uh, viability of life. Maybe we can talk well, I'm a veteran. 22 veterans every day swallow a muzzle and kill themselves. And they're homeless. And we're building hotels for illegals, for people that illegally entered the country under some bull guise of amnesty. Almost all Trump voters believe that a president, Donald Trump, is so intimidating that no foreign power would dare to provoke him. I don't think there would have been any war in Ukraine. The thing is, they don't believe. The thing is, they had seen previously what he did. It's not a thing of belief. They had seen. You can't believe when you had seen. They, it was proven. That's why they stand for it. I don't think anybody would have gone after Israel. No way. His factory is 30 minutes away. Jack took over the family business from his father and now he runs it together with his son. In good times, almost 50 people worked in the metal processing company, but currently there are only 34. He can sand down the high spots, but then he's got to fill in. We're creating things to do. In a sense, we're almost teaching them to not work productively, to give them more time on the clock. It's kind of frustrating. Jack goes to a community center to vote. I'm glad you guys can get along. He's a business guy. He's going to percolate the economy. He's going to open up oil again. What I believe will change if, if and when Donald Trump becomes the 47th president of the United States. I just thought of something when he said he's going to open up oil again. Um, Alberta, the premier of Alberta, was saying... Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, is trying to stop oil in Canada as well. Meanwhile, in America, they are looking to open up oil. And then in Canada, they are looking to stop it. Let me know what you think about that. Because uh, she said, I think she, she initiated something. I don't want to speculate, but I don't remember right now. She initiated something to avoid the, the, the Prime Minister from stopping oil in Alberta. Because, you know, I've heard that that's the number one source of wealth for the people living out there. If and when Donald Trump becomes the 47th president of the United States, is an invigorated economy, opening up petroleum, um, natural gas, fracking for natural gas, a very clean fossil fuel. I think most of the myths have been debunked about what fracking does that's bad. Um, clean fossil fuels is the best thing we have. Electric cars aren't going to make it yet. It's just not their time. You can't force electric cars on people when they can't charge their cars, especially in cold weather. When you're dependent on others, you're weak. When you're independent, you have strength. And strength breeds more strength. 
I just voted for President Trump. Feel good about it? I feel damn good about it. <laughs> Next stop, just over two weeks later, Las Vegas. My, my, my thing is the question I keep asking, why are people so open now to speak about it? In 2016, a lot of people that even voted for Trump would have openly say they vote for Trump. They would get a lot of backlash to start with. Already, they won't even, they won't even pronounce it. But now, everybody's saying, I'm voting for Trump. I voted for Trump. I will vote for Trump. Like... What changed now? Why are you so comfortable saying that now? We meet Jesus Marquez in his favorite restaurant on the eve of the primary election in Nevada. Latinos will play a decisive role in these elections as they are the second largest voting group. Today, almost one in five Americans has Latin American roots and the times when they reliably voted for Democrats are over. I was born here, and then we went back to Mexico, and I, I spent part of my, my youth in Mexico and then came back. <laughs> Me celebrating my birthday today with my family is a, it's a, it's a personal uh, act, event, however, we always talk about what I do. ¿Cómo está mi gente? Saludos y bendiciones. Estamos una vez más aquí. Jesús has a radio show where he campaigns for Donald Trump in the Mexican-American community. The 49-year-old is paid for his political advice and also sells ads. La campaña en contra de Joe Biden aquí en el estado de Nevada. Así es que vamos a empezar a recolectar toda esa información. The very first time I met Donald Trump was in 2016. I got a call and they say, we're looking for a group of Latino leaders from across the country to give him counsel and to uh, Latino Hispanic matters. I flew into New York. Uh, we went to Trump Tower on, I believe, Fifth Avenue. And uh, I went up to the his office. I sat across the, the table with him. The main uh, advice I told him to, to go and talk to, to Latinos to be open to go to places like this and, 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 and speak to Hispanics about the real issues. Hmm. There was a black woman who said the same thing too, that Trump asked her for advice. So he was actually calling these people. That's pretty good leadership, if you ask me. The number one, second and third place among Hispanics is the economy, education and health but also the, the situation at the border. The policy that we have in place right now is allowing for these people to come in and then immediately get ahead of the line from other Latinos that have been here for decades. They're being offered social, social services that, that other Hispanics don't get. Jesus says many Latinos feel the current migrants are receiving financial support that rightfully belongs to them and believe they are suffering because of the newcomers. This is a topic that Jesus regularly discusses on his radio show. Because Donald Trump is a stronger candidate. The people like him, he, they love him, and more and more Latinos are liking him too. So we'll see what happens, but uh, tonight will be uh, a, a, a kind of like an indication of what the, the feel is going to look like in the next, next months. Long lines have formed in front of the voting stations on the day of the caucus. All of them here. yelling Trump. Here in the west of the US. The favorite is clear. <laughs> Trump all the way. Who was the other person in the primary president. ballot? This Nikki state Haley. is going to pot. This country is going to pot. He, we need him. Because he's the only one that can do and get America back to where it belongs. Because he's the best. He already proved it once. He's going to prove it again. If he doesn't get reelected, we will not have a country any longer. He knows how to run a country. He's a great leader. And the crowd is pretty mixed, you know, Latinos, whites, blacks. People, People used see to say him, it was a white crowd somebody before. who is not a politician, or somebody who, who uh, speaks with no filters and, and uh, with no political correctness, and they like that. It is still uncertain who will win the presidential election in November, but Trump can rely on euphoric supporters who know exactly why they want him as president and are ready to fight for his victory. In Joe Biden's camp, at least for now, there is no sign of this energy. <laughs> In Joe Biden's camp, there's no sign of this energy.
Well, maybe the Democrats are planning something different. People are speculating that it's going to be between Gavin Newsom and Michelle coming from the Democrat side. But Michelle Obama said openly that she's not going to be contesting. She has no interest in politics. So it might be Biden. I don't know if Biden can beat Trump at this point, but I'm excited to see what is going to happen. Anyways, let me know what you think about that. If there's anything you want to add, correct or critique, feel free to do so in the comment section. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.